What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rainy's Rides. We're in this little secret location doing some filming, and guess what? Lo and behold, we have a smaller size crossover SUV that is getting some people's attention. This is it. This is a 2022 first time ever Toyota Corolla Cross. But before we get into this XLE trim with all wheel drive, let's talk about what's going on here. The subcompact crossover SUV segment has been on fire as of recent memory. The reason why is with, of course, car prices going higher and higher and higher, people have decided to downsize when looking for their next new vehicle. Now, SUVs are definitely a top seller no matter what class, but with this smaller size, people are finding some real value. Now, you may look at this Corolla Cross and on camera, you might say, well, Joe, how is that a subcompact that looks like a RAV4? It looks like the size of a RAV4. It's not. It's right on the cusp of in between a subcompact and compact. What are some of the competitors to this Corolla Cross? The Mazda CX-30. You're looking at the Nissan Kicks. You're looking at vehicles like the Honda HRV. Of course, the Hyundai Kona and the Kia Seltos. So what I want to find out is this car is all new for 2022. There is a brand, the main competitor to Toyota, obviously Honda. They also have a new redesign for the HRV coming. It's actually hitting the showrooms as we speak. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this Corolla Cross and see is it the better SUV to buy over a Honda HRV? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, familiar shape, but it still looks a little different. So at the front of the business, you're gonna get these large, Headlight housings. Now, the great news about them being large is there's a lot of great tech inside. You got LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, and LED turn signals. Something on the HRV. If you've watched my HRV, our HRV review, it's a little bit of a tongue twister. You'll notice that they don't have full LED lighting all the way around. We got full LEDs up front. And if you haven't seen the HRV review, I'll leave it at the end of this one. Now, one of the things I do like no fake vents, nice body colored. You could see some of that extra style that they brought into the front. Even though it uses the Corolla name, it does have some unique physical appearance items that separate it from the sedan. You'll notice the flat black on the bottom. This will take a better beating over time than gloss black. And then as we come across the front grill, this grill is specific. The color is specific to the XLE trim. You got three trims, XLE is at the top. You'll notice it's like a metallic gunmetal, kind of like a semi-gloss finish on it. We got the Toyota badge. This little bug here, that's not included. We'll get rid of that. You gotta pay extra for that bug, Ew, gross. Working our way down, you got some silver around the perimeter that's part of the XLE package. And you have this large area flat black, functional in the center, and I like the way they went color matched on the bottom, plus you're getting LED fog lamps on both sides. That's another thing that on the HRV, no more fog lamps. Now, when we get up onto the hood, you'll see some of that resemblance to the Corolla. I like the way they did this rise in the center. I know it's hard to see, but it, the nose and the hood comes up at an angle, and then it sort of plateaus in the center. What I do love is you get that great fit and finish from Toyota. And I'm sure some of you would argue that Honda has the same level of fit and finish, and I would have to agree that they do. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. Now, when you go top XLE trim, this is what we got going on. You got an 18 inch wheel. The crazy thing is, the nutty thing is that when you go top trim, which is Turing in the HRV, excuse me, not Turing, EXL, if you go that trim, you got 17 inch wheels. The top trim has 17 inch wheels. That doesn't make sense. This makes sense. Top trim, largest wheel, 18 inches on this Corolla Cross. I like the simple machine aluminum V-shaped formation all the way around, that dark gunmetal gray finish, and then sort of following suit with a lot of the other SUVs. There is some plastic cladding. The good news is it's not too thick and it doesn't stick out too far, and it's got a nice clean shape to it. And guess what? The HRV also has body color around the fender opening. Now, when it comes to this wheel and tire setup, 
225 on the width, meaty 55 series sidewall. You could get the Corolla Cross front wheel drive. This one is all wheel drive. Coming down the side, color match on the mirror caps, LED turn singles, nice and slim and trim. You'll notice the proportions, like I said, this is a sub compact crossover SUV. A little bit of bright, shiny metal work, flat black on your roof rails. You do have a sunroof, color matched on the door handles. And then you'll notice how they got the flat black on the lower portion of the side of the vehicle. Now, as we work our way towards the rear, I like the way that they take the trim and then they flare it out into this butter knife. And, I, and they took the name Corolla Cross. Super clean, don't need to put a bunch of emblems all over the place. Nice clean design, it looks classy. And then coming around all the way, swinging wide out and coming to the rear, you got a stubby short roof spoiler. We do have a wiper, we're not gonna zonk it because of the price point. And also the HRV has that as well. Pretty much every competitor in the subcompact class has the wiper exposed on the back. They did a great job with the lighting. Look at those LED lights in there, looking really great. I like the way it extends out. The Corolla Cross badge, Corolla, Cross, I think it was smart building upon that name. XLE is gonna be your top trim, all wheel drive, gonna get the power to the ground, all four corners. And then as we drop it like it's hot, flat black and just some of the body color, just like up front. I'm fine that there's not really too much going on. The one zonk that I do have is this. Why is this little guy just dangling there? I know some of you are used to little things just dangling there, but I wish they would have put like a finished exhaust tip, at least on one side, but on both sides would have been better on the XLE, but that just kind of looks sad. Just makes me sad. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our Corolla Cross. All right guys, we got the hood popped open. You do have a prop rod. The HRV also has a prop rod. I do want to show you something before we just dive in. There is an Easter egg underneath the hood. So get your basket out, get the bunny ears out. This actual design, was the inspiration for this vehicle and it says Corolla Cross. So that's your first Easter egg. There's actually more, but we'll get to that a little bit later. What do we got underneath the hood? First of all, you've got an engine that's totally exposed. So no plastic covers really. That's what an engine looks like in today's world. Wires, hoses, tubes, all that kind of stuff. But what are we looking at? We're looking at a two liter naturally aspirated inline four, produces 169 horsepower, 150, pound feet of torque. Well, guess what? That's more horsepower than the Honda HRV. We do have a CVT, but the good news about Toyota CVT compared to Honda's is that we have a fixed first gear. So you actually have a fixed first gear and the rest is traditional CVT base. Zero to 60, I hope you're not in a rush. Take your time, read a book, maybe do your nails. Zero to 60, 9.2 seconds. I could actually skip faster zero to 60 than this Corolla Cross. Top speed is 120 miles per hour. The vehicle weighs 3,384 pounds with all wheel drive. Now remember, you do have your three trims, L, LX, and XLE. So those are gonna be your three trims, L, LE, XLE. Why don't we go ahead though? Let's get to the interior and see what big things come in small packages with this Corolla Cross. All right, guys, we're inside the 2022 Corolla Cross. First time ever here in the United States. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been looking for a small SUV. Uh, my daughter's going off to college. She needs something to get her around town, and she doesn't want some big, huge, massive monster of a vehicle. I kind of like what this Corolla Cross brings to the table, but how much is it? So this being the top trim, the XLE trim, what you're basically looking at is an MSRP, a tick under $28,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the HRV, to the door panels. Kind of bland. They're all one color for the most part. I wish that stitching up top was contrast stitching. That would have kind of brought just a little bit extra color to the door panel, but they brought some silver with the door handle. The that, thing that makes me happy, there's no gloss black. A little bit of silver, nice soft armrest. Door pocket is a pretty good size. You could probably put, I would say, two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a glass of whole milk to wash it down. Now, going from the door panel to the dash, 
It is hard material up top, but you got tons of soft touch. See how this stitching would have been nice if it was like silver or white? A little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. And then you're going to get the same exact infotainment system that's in your regular Corolla. Actually, in many of the Toyota products, this is the older operating software. So this doesn't have the Hey Toyota uh, ability or anything. You can say Hey Toyota, it just doesn't talk back to you. This is your main screen. Other than that, not a lot going on. Let me throw it into reverse. There's your backup camera. It does take up the whole screen space, which is good. And you have trajectory just a little on the grainy side. I feel like I'm watching an older 1970s movie. Put it back in the park, and there we are. You do get dual climate, so you can adjust the temperature with the digital readouts. We have our two stages of heated seats, USB-A, wireless charging. This is going to control that CVT transmission. Just a little bit of gloss black. You got two cup holders, your standard Toyota key fob. I don't know. There's just something about key fobs I have to zonk because it feels like a key fob from 1990 and not in a very good way. Armrest is nice and high. The problem is it's like basically they took a flat rock and they wrapped it with this soft text material and it's not very soft. Open it up. You do have a 12 volt in there and you got enough room, I would say, for four, maybe five golf balls that were signed by Tiger Woods as he was driving off the cliff. That's why he actually lost control was he was signing his balls, but you got them in your center console. You were able to buy them off of eBay for a good price. Seats, soft text material. Here's the stitching. Look, they thought they did the stitching here, not on the door panels, but nice and smooth material. The challenge is, is you have manual seat controls even on the top trim for the passenger. I have electric adjustment for the driver and you do have that standard size sunroof. But why don't you come over here to the business end. I want to show you behind the wheel of this new Corolla Cross. All right, guys, here we are behind the wheel. Like I said, you got eight-way adjustable seats for the driver, which is really nice. That lower lumbar is going to feel good for those longer drives. And then, of course, the steering wheel, leather wrapped. You do have a very simplistic horn button. I wish they would do something with that, but you have the same exact steering wheel as a regular Toyota Corolla. Manual adjustments, tilting and telescoping. The dash, same story, same exact dash. You have a clean seven inch digital display in the center and then everything else is gonna be analog. Easy to read, easy to figure out. That's the way Toyota wants it to be. That's how they want it to be, how they say it should be easy to figure out. Well, let's get in the back seat and see if your passenger is going to feel cramped in this smaller SUV. All right, guys, back seat time. And you know what? You're going to feel like you're in a Corolla because it doesn't offer a ton of space. The good news is with the flatter roof design and the way they carve out the headliner, you feel pretty comfortable. I'm six feet tall. I got good headroom. It's just I had to move the seat up a little bit because it just felt a little cramped. Oh, hold on a second. Somebody's calling me. Oh, it's Toyota. It's my friend Zach at Toyota Home. It's like, hello? Oh, hey, Zach. Oh, you're watching right now? Oh, oh, I did? Oh. No, we're still, we're still filming. No, no problem. I appreciate you calling and let me know. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. See you. So that was my friend Zach that works over at Toyota Corporate. I guess I forgot to tell you the MPGs when we're looking underneath the hood. And the MPGs is something that Toyota is very proud of with this vehicle, especially with all wheel drive. So you're looking at MPGs. Here it is. I hope you're listening. 29 in the city, 32 on the highway. If you go front wheel drive, you'll get over 30 in the city. That's how efficient this is. Better fuel economy, way better than the HRV. That's another reason why Zach wanted to make sure that I told you, but let's continue our journey. So soft touch, that soft text material all the way around. It's not real leather. It's like pleather. That's why they call it soft text. Backs of the center console, you do have your AC vents, which are nice. And you got two USBs all the way down there on the bottom. HRV has nada, nothing, zero, zilch. I think if I remember correctly, they had an area where it looks like there would be some USBs, but there's nothing. Seats though, they live up to their name. They're soft. Armrest. Charmin. Now, what was it a different company that designed this armrest and a different company that designed this one? Because this one's soft. This is like Charmin. That's like 
sandpaper. Like when you go to the bathroom. This is like triple ply, that's sandpaper. So I do like the way that feels, two cup holders. Let's go ahead, let's get in that cargo area and see if we could fit an HRV within this Corolla Cross. Wouldn't that be something? Let's check it out. All right guys, cargo area time. Now what's great is if you go XLE trim, you get a nice electric assist on the rear cargo hatch area. Once it opens up, you're actually greeted to 24 cubic feet of space. Now, one thing to realize is that that rear bumper is a little high, so you're gonna have to kind of lift up and over. Once you're in though, you're in like Flynn, we got that JBL subwoofer in the back, part of that premium sound system, gonna give the thump a thump thump tunes. Over here on the passenger side, you actually got a perfect amount of space for a gallon of milk, and you can slice some Twinkies on the side, at least four of them, dip those in milk. Mmm, that sounds good. Now, what's great is, is that you lift up the cargo floor, you do get a spare. I think the bad news is, as you could tell, the cargo floor is very high. A lot of that has to do with this being an all-wheel drive vehicle because of the rear differential. You do get a security shade. Wow, I did that in one try. I'm actually impressed with myself. And then if you need more space, it's actually real simple. You just push up top and you flip on down. And then now you have that great amount of space. You could go to Costco, get whatever you need, and you're ready to rock and roll. But hey, we're ready to rock and roll, especially if you are ready to rock and roll. So why don't we go ahead, once this closes, if you're ready, we're gonna go on throttle and see how this Corolla Cross drives. Let's go do it. All right, guys, we're in this 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross. Now, the interesting thing is, remember, Toyota does have a hybrid version of this vehicle coming for model year 2023. If you haven't seen that review, I'll have it at the end of this one. We did a walk around at the Toyota HQ event. But what I do love about this vehicle is that it is a great city commuter vehicle. You're gonna get awesome MPGs, you have the security of the all-wheel drive, and it's just that very familiar Toyota environment. And I think that's a really good thing, getting to the infotainment system. I know it's not in the best position, like people don't love this setup, but it is at a line of sight, out the windshield, and it's easy to get to. The digital dash in the center, that seven inch display, they did a great job with it. Everything else is analog. The only thing is, it's just slow. I mean, zero to 60, anything less than eight seconds to me is just really kind of unacceptable. Um, it, it needs to be quicker. Uh, the HRV definitely is going to beat you zero to 60, and even that vehicle is slow. But just one of those things to think about, and I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, Joe, go get a freaking GR Corolla if you want to go fast in a Toyota. Well, that is true, but it's nice to be able to get out of your own way especially when you're pulling out in traffic. Visibility is great, side mirrors are great. You got the Toyota uh, sensing uh, safety equipment, which is phenomenal. Blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, all that good stuff. And overall, it's just an easy vehicle to drive. All right, I'm actually gonna come to a quick stop here and then we're gonna go on throttle. On throttle. So you do have those simulated gears. Like I said, first gear is actually a fixed first gear. Rest is conventional CVT. And you do have the simulated gears after that first gear to lower that RPM. So when you're on throttle, it's not totally pegging the revs and it's all loud and booming on the interior. Seats are comfy and I think that's gonna be important because of the maximum MPGs that you have. This one being the XLE trim has the JBL uh, multi-speaker sound system and just steering input is very light easy to drive in traffic like we have right now this heavier traffic so easy to drive around the city and then you got plenty of room except for that rear cargo area the the floor is just a little high all right you ready let's go on throttle on throttle here we go around the bend So not bad once you get rolling. 
And I do think they did a good job with the simulated gears. It actually feels a lot less like a conventional CVT. Four cylinder, it's a little noisy, but it is a four cylinder. So it's just something to think about. But you definitely have uh, more room. I feel like I'm in more vehicle with this Corolla Cross compared to the HRV. HRV feels like it's a little bit on the smaller subcompact SUV side where this is a little bit larger. But on the highway, it's super smooth. And like I said, with those good MPG numbers, you're definitely gonna be able to cruise for a while and feel comfortable within the vehicle. And just driving in high traffic situations because of the visibility and the ease of driving, it just makes it a, a snap. But I'm hoping that you got what you needed out of this review. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day with this Corolla Cross. I definitely wanna thank everybody at Toyota USA for getting us access. This is only my second time filming and reviewing and driving this Corolla Cross. Let me know what you think. Is this something that checks off the boxes for you and your family's needs? Or are you rather gonna go Honda HRV? Let me know in that comment section which way you're gonna buy. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. We gotta give it up to Stephen Flood. Check him out on Instagram, Stephen Flood Photography. If you like cars, you'll like Stephen. And if you like Stephen, well, guess what? Then I like you too. So show him some love in that comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.